Welcome to Citrix Tech Insight, where we provide overviews of Citrix technology features and functions through technical insights and visual walkthroughs. In this Tech Insight video, we will focus on providing high availability for your Citrix DAS deployment with the Local Host Cache feature. Local Host Cache, or LHC for short, is a high availability solution that is designed to mitigate end user launch impact issues when Citrix Cloud connectors are unable to communicate with Citrix Cloud. It enables brokering operations to continue to happen for whatever reason, be it outages, connection issues, internet blackouts, and so forth. Think of LHC as an insurance policy against productivity loss for your Citrix DAS solution. For LHC to work, Windows Server-based Citrix Cloud connectors are required, as at this time, the connector appliance is not supported. Each resource location would need a Citrix storefront server with a minimum version of 19.12 CU4, and all of the VDAs must be configured to point to the cloud connectors in the resource location. Lastly, for external connection, Netscaler Gateway is needed. So how does LHC work? When a resource location enters LHC mode, the first cloud connector listed by alphabetical order on the storefront server gets elected as the primary connector for the resource location. If for any reason that connector is unavailable, then the next connector on the list would be chosen as the primary connector. For this reason, all cloud connectors in your resource location should be added to storefront as delivery controllers. All VDAs must be configured to point to all the cloud connectors in your resource location for LHC to work properly. There are several phases that the cloud connectors go through when deployed for LHC. These phases can be monitored from application events within the event viewer and are reported from the Citrix remote broker provider. Event ID 3003 is logged anytime the cloud connector is transitioning from one state to another. During normal working conditions, connectors are in the working state. If for any reason the connectors are unable to connect to the Citrix Cloud Service endpoints, they would enter a state called pending. Connectors will stay in the pending state for 60 seconds and will perform a health check every 5 seconds on the Cloud Service endpoints. If connectivity becomes stable again during this 60 second interval, the connectors will exit pending state and return to the working state. If the issues continue after the pending state completes, the connectors will enter the initial HA state. This will only happen if all cloud connectors in the resource location have lost connectivity to the internet or the service endpoints. During the initial HA state is when Storefront elects the primary cloud connector in order to take over delivery controller processes. This is possible as during normal operations, the broker service configuration data is pushed from Citrix Cloud to all the resource location cloud connectors. This process is what allows the cloud connector to take over the brokering operations. The primary connector will initialize a connection to the local SQL database instant that has the configuration data and will then take over brokering operations. The secondary controllers will shut down the XML, STA, and VDA services to allow the VDAs to connect to the primary connector. This will force the VDAs to trigger a re-registration so that they will register with a primary connector for the resource location. It is possible that during this phase to see launch failures as the VDAs re-register with the primary connector, they will show an unregistered power state unknown in Web Studio. Storefront will detect the XML services are down on the secondary connectors and remove them from the list of available delivery controllers and begin to send XML requests to the primary connector. Connectors will stay in the initial HA state for five minutes and health checks will only happen at the end of this stage. This allows the VDA re-registrations to complete and for the resource location to become stable. If the health checks pass, then the connectors will go into pending recovery mode. If they fail, the extended HA phase will begin. During this phase, only the primary connectors will continue to function for XML, STA, and VDA registration services. VDAs will continue to show as unregistered and power state as unknown. 
There is no time limit for the extended HA mode and health checks will run every 20 seconds. If health checks pass, connectors will enter the pending recovery state. Pending recovery has the same functional level as extended HA. VDAs will continue to be registered with the primary connector and the XML, STA, and VDA services on the secondary connectors will continue to be down. Connectors stay in the pending state for 10 minutes with health checks performed every 20 seconds. If the health checks fail, connectors return to the extended HA state. If, however, the health checks pass for the entire 10 minutes, connectors will exit the pending recovery state and go back to working normally. The services shut down on the secondary connectors will be brought back online and all the connectors will start connecting back to the Citrix DAS service endpoints. VDA registration will be triggered and the VDAs will again register with the Citrix DAS service. In some instances, a Citrix DAS deployment may require multiple machine catalogs hosted in different resource locations, but are managed by a single delivery group. Deployments that span across zones create a special situation when one zone or resource location goes into outage mode and the other resource location remains online. Storefront is configured with all connectors as delivery controllers, and whether or not they are online or outage mode, the launch request will be sent to either resource location to respond with the correct broker and data based on session data, new launches or reconnects, and launch readiness of the resources. This request can be sent to resource location A or resource location B cloud connectors. When both resource locations are online, they will receive one single source of broker data from the DAS service to direct the launch request to either zone. Brokering user sessions, however, with a zone or home preference can create logic conflicts when the Citrix DAS service has to choose between resource locations that are online or that are in outage mode. For example, if resource location B goes into outage mode, there is now a catalog that can be brokered by the Citrix DAS service or the primary connector in resource location B. If a user tries to launch a session, Storefront will be able to contact an online connector from resource location A or the primary connector in resource location B. If the launch request is handled by the primary connector in resource location B, then the launch will be successful if the user's home or zone preference needs a resource from that zone. However, if Storefront sends the launch request to the connector online in resource group A, then that service will not be able to communicate with the connectors in resource location B and the launch will fail with no desktop available failure code. Storefront is not configured to store zone data as that is sent by the DAS service for each launch or enumeration request. If this happens, you can see the errors from the connector event viewer application logs. This scenario can be avoided, however, by configuring the advanced health checks in the storefront configuration. This setting allows storefront to gather zone data and information to direct the launch request to the right connector, whether the resource location is in outage mode or not. This setting is not enabled by default, so the storefront web.config file will need to be updated with this setting. The health checks will then keep Storefront aware of what resources are available in what zone or resource location by the user data and connect reconnect resolution for the brokering of that session to the correct available resource. In some cases, you may need to load balance XML services through the Netscaler ADC for scaling or performance optimization. This introduces a special case of handling the availability of cloud connectors in outage mode. For example, if you have three or more connectors configured in a service or service group to load balance for storefront requests, by default, the TCP monitor is configured for each of these services in the service group. When a connector goes into outage mode, most of the time, the TCP layer of the connector will be available and reachable by the load balancer. In this scenario, the load balancer will continue to send requests to the secondary connectors that are deemed unavailable in the outage mode scenario. Rather than using the default TCP monitor, the Citrix XD DDC monitor should be configured for the services. This monitor is designed to send XML requests to the connector and see if the connector responds back with an HTTP 200 OK. If the secondary connectors are in the initial HA phase of outage mode, the XML service will be unavailable and respond back with an HTTP 
503 status. The load balancer will then take, be able to make the decision to mark the server or part of the service group as down or unavailable. Citrix has created a PowerShell module that can assist in configuring outage mode in cloud connectors, gather information on the readiness of the connectors to be ready for outage mode scenarios, and monitoring brokering data during outage mode scenario or testing. As we go along using the LHC PowerShell module, we will see the LHC phases and how each component interfaces when a resource location enters outage mode. First, we will check if the connects have a configured sync or update of the integration running. This is started by importing the high availability PowerShell module and then running the test config sync running command. This command returns false, which means there are no pending updates from the DAS service configuration. Opening the event viewer, we can see event 3504, which tells us that cloud connector 41 has been elected as the primary connector. When we enter outage mode, this cloud connector will be brokering XML and VDA registrations. We will now force an outage, which sets the registry setting for outage mode to force. We also do the same force on the secondary connector. Back on the primary connector event viewer, doing a refresh shows us that the connector has entered the pending HA stage. If we were to disable outage mode within 60 seconds, the connector would enter back into the working normal stage, but we will keep it in outage mode for now. After 60 seconds have passed once in the pending HA stage, we will see that the connector has now transitioned into the initial HA stage. As mentioned earlier, the initial HA stage lasts five minutes. However, using the LHC PowerShell module, we can parse the commands locally to continue testing outage mode. The enable high availability SDK command does two things. First, it sets a registry setting for connecting to the local database and adds an environment variable to the PowerShell session to allow connection to the local database. Running the get broker machine command with the parameters allows us to connect to the local database. Selecting the machine name and registration state shows that one machine has re-registered with the primary connector. However, the local database does not have the registration information for the other machines until they have re-registered. Adding a count in the session state, we can now see other machines are starting to register and that the connector is tracking both registration and session activity from the re-registration. Looking at storefront, since the initial HA stage is in process, we can see that the secondary connector has been removed from the list of available delivery controllers. We also see the same for the Netscaler gateway, showing that our secondary connector is down in the resource location in outage mode. Back on the primary connector, rerunning the get broker machine command, we see that the rest of the machines have registered and are reporting sessions to the connector. We can also run the get broker session command and see that we have an active session in a disconnected session. I can now launch a desktop even though we are in the initial HA mode and see pretty quickly that we connect to the session and looking back at the get broker session command, we see that the initial session is now active. Going back to the event viewer, we can see that we're now in extended HA stage, which will run indefinitely until the connectors are able to connect back to the Citrix DAS service. We can force this with the PowerShell module running the disable outage mode command to bring the environment into pending recovery. The same command will be run on the secondary controller as well. Checking the event viewer, we see that the connector is now pending recovery. After 10 minutes, the connector has transitioned from pending recovery to working normally, and the connector switched from using the local database to the Citrix DAS service. The secondary connector will also start being able to process XML and VDA services. For more information on configuring and using the Citrix DAS local hostcast feature in your deployment, please visit the local hostcast tech brief located on Citrix Tech Zone.